Hmm. Not really working, is it? Okay, so today I'm going to be going over a really quick video on uh, what is a super common problem that I see on desktop computers, especially those that exist in a kind of humid and kind of dusty environment. Uh, this is something I see across all different types of computers, uh, even some laptops, and uh, we're going to go over what is involved in cleaning the internal memory, also known as RAM, and ensuring that those memory sticks are clean and their slots are also clean and seated properly. So uh, this is a common reason why many computers will not boot up or why they will freeze or have some graphical glitching, uh, you know, whilst using it. Uh, granted, you know, this can be caused by all sorts of things. Computers are complicated machines, but this is probably the most common reason why uh, desktops misbehave. So uh, I'm going to switch it off and we'll get right into it. Now, disclaimer, obviously do this at your own risk. If you don't know what you're doing, take it to a professional, but generally speaking, it's pretty straightforward. So let's do it. So now that we've disconnected your computer, what we're going to do is we're going to pop off the side panel and uh, have a look inside. Now, before you do that, though, you will need some bits and pieces. Uh, for starters, you will need a brush. Uh, this is going to be to get rid of some of the dust and the mess that you find. Uh, just make sure it has reasonably stiff bristles. Otherwise, it won't be very effective. Um, don't use a brush that obviously is filthy or anything like that. Uh, you'll need an eraser. Uh, hopefully one that's not as well used as mine, but uh, just a standard square pencil eraser will do the trick just fine. Uh, you will probably need a screwdriver. Uh, some computers have thumb screws like this one here, or they have like a latch system where they kind of like pop out, uh, or sometimes they have like these buttons you push in and the thing lifts up. Just have a look at your case. Uh, you'll see how, how the panels are secured on. Um, and uh, you should be able to work out what you need from there. Sometimes you need a flathead if it's got a weird looking screw, but uh, generally speaking, it's not hard to get into desktop computers. Uh, and don't freak out too much if it's got a warranty void thing on it as well. I don't think they can legally void your warranty for getting inside your own computer. It's a bit ridiculous, that thing. Um, anyway, lastly, contact cleaner. This is optional, but I highly recommend it. If you can get it, you can get it at most hardware stores. Um, I personally got this one online, but I know you can get similar things at places like Repco or Bunnings. Um, electronic contact cleaner will do a fantastic job uh, of in cleaning up any electronics uh, that are filthy or dirty ports or connectors, anything metal. Uh, it will be very good at, at cleaning that up, it evaporates straight away so it uh, can't cause any damage um, through moisture which is really nice. Now keep in mind, do keep this away from thin clear plastics, uh, for example like um, like a telephone jack, you know the little connector, those types of plastics, you spray this on that it, they will kind of disintegrate which is neat I guess but you know, you've been warned. <laughs> Anywho. We're just going to open this up. This one, we just got some thumb screws. So we're just going to take these out and slide it off. By the way, if you're not sure which side comes off, have a look at what your motherboard is. This one's on the left side, which means that the right hand side panel comes off to get inside the computer. And we're just going to put this to the side and we'll pick that back up later. Okay, so now that you've opened up your computer, flipped it on its side, you're going to see a few bits and pieces, most of which I'm sure is pretty scary looking, but uh, don't you worry, it's really not too complicated. So we have these modules right here. These are what we call RAM or system memory. And uh, this is what I find is probably the most common cause of system problems uh, in regards to boot up or freezing or general crashing. So uh, what we're going to do is we're going to take these out and we're going to give them a bit of a clean. So to remove the RAM module, all you have to do is just uh, place your finger or your thumb on these little clips and just do it on both ends. And they should become loose and they can now come out. 
And uh, one thing I will note is do make a note of the uh, short end and the long end of these modules based on what type of RAM it is, whether it's DDR1, DDR2, DDR3, DDR4, etc. Uh, it will be in a slightly different position, but it must line up with the motherboard when you when you put it back in at a later time. So just, just keep that in mind because if you try to put it in backwards, well, that's not going to be very good. So we're just going to take these out for now and then we're going to have a quick look at them close up and uh, and see what they're like. So now that you've removed your RAM, we're just going to have a look at these gold pins down here and just see if we see any residue or signs of filth uh, sitting on these these pins. So that tends to be one of the telltale signs of RAM problems uh, in on your system that's caused by just dirt, really. Uh, now, do keep in mind, please don't handle it by the chips. Always grab RAM by the edges. Don't put... Uh, your fingers on these gold pins either because your oily fingers are not great for these uh, sensitive electronics so be careful with that now this one looks pretty clean uh, I don't see too many major issues I'm just going to grab this second stick since this system has two sticks of RAM and oh yeah I can see here and I'm hoping the camera picks it up but um, you see how we've got all sorts of different colors there on those gold pins yeah we've got lots of dirt on this one so I'm guessing this is the reason why our little test system is playing up and uh, we're going to give this a proper liberal clean with our eraser and uh, get it running at full speed again. So I'm just going to grab my eraser, I'm going to put it down on the, uh, on the table here, just put a little pressure on it so that uh, it doesn't move around and I'm just going to run this eraser up and down this uh, gold contact, just putting a little bit of pressure on there. And uh, this is going to make light work of all that filth sitting on these gold contacts. And uh, you may want to go over it a couple of times. Generally speaking, once over usually does a pretty good job. Let's make sure to get rid of those filings. We'll do the other side. Try to keep your uh, eraser well clear of any sort of resistors or little uh, bits and pieces above these uh, these gold contacts. This particular piece of memory has a heat spreader, this little metal thing that covers it, uh, sort of performance RAM. So they put extra cooling on them, which I think is pretty pointless, but uh, hey, it looks cool, right? But if we have a look at this other module, we don't have such luxuries and uh, it's a little more exposed. So just keep in mind, see these little things here? Do make sure you stay well away from those. I'll get rid of some of these shavings. Oh, do make sure you have good lighting when you do this as well. If you have pretty poor lighting, then it's going to be pretty hard to see uh, what is going on. And, um, you know, you may not see the, the filth sitting on your RAM sticks. I'm just going to finish this one off. And then what we're going to do is we're going to clean the slot themselves. Because if you have filthy RAM, then you probably also have a filthy slot. Uh, since they are in contact with each other. So I'm just going to finish this off and uh, do make sure you get rid of all these shavings from the uh, RAM modules as well. So just grab your brush. Once you've finished, give them a good brush down. Make sure there's nothing else sitting on them because if anything gets between these little gold pins and the little slot pins on the motherboard, then we're going to have a bad time. So keeping it tidy. It's very important here. And uh, it really is incredible how many computers uh, suffer from this and, um, you know, often come good and work for many years uh, after a good clean. So uh, that's all that done. And now we're going to tackle those RAM slots. Okay, so now that we've cleaned our RAM, we're just going to make light work of these slots, make sure they're clean as well. Uh, one side note, if you do notice any like seriously corroded or, or black marks anywhere on the slots here or anywhere even on the RAM modules, uh, that's bad news. Uh, there's a good chance that uh, may not work again. So just be aware you may need to replace the RAM or even the motherboard if it's on the slot itself. Uh, or perhaps you just might not have to use that slot, um, which is very annoying, especially if you only have two and um, not a lot of RAM. But what we're going to do is we're going to use contact cleaner, this stuff, to uh, just spray it down. 
Um, obviously, you have your power disconnected, so there's no problem doing this. And uh, we're just going to give it a good, proper brush. And yes, I know it looks like it's swimming right now, but that's totally fine. This stuff evaporates pretty much right away. I'm just going to go through this nice and vigorously. Don't worry, this uh, brush is softer than everything here, so it's not going to cause any damage. Not unless you really, really hard on it, but um, I've yet to destroy a motherboard doing this, so that's good. Uh, you may want to use one of these brushes instead if it's uh, a particularly annoying angle, or if, if you have one of these really tight, small computers that have stuff in the way, you kind of need to get things out of the way first to get your hands in, but uh, this should... Get those slots nice and clean. And if there is any filth, generally it'll just sit at the bottom of the plastic slot rather than um, being on the pins, causing connection problems. Uh, another thing we can do is that we can grab our RAM modules now and we can insert uh, one at a time. One thing I also like to do sometimes is just insert them a few times. And uh, that way, if there does happen to be anything pretty filthy in there. Reinserting it a few times is going to give a real clean clean contact. Alright, we could do that for the next slot. Now what we're going to do to start with is we're going to run just one stick of memory at a time. I'm just going to do this a few more times. Uh, and I'm going to wait a couple of minutes for this to completely evaporate. And then we'll test it and see how we go. Uh, if it passes the test and if it turns on okay, then you can go back and you can insert your next stick of memory. Uh, and if you have any problems, you can always try changing the stick or try changing the slot. Uh, you've got a bit of experimentation to do. Uh, if you have four sticks of RAM, you can try maybe just two or three at a time and uh, just keep experimenting until you have a working configuration. Using that sort of process of elimination, you try to determine if there is still an underlying problem because whilst cleaning works great most of the time, sometimes you just get a faulty stick or a faulty slot and uh, no cleaning is going to bring it back from the dead. So um, you do have to fiddle around sometimes. But anyway, let's give this a try. All right, so I've put all the computer back together, put both sticks of RAM in, and look at that. We've got some life out of it. So uh, it looks like that worked. It was just filthy RAM in the end. Uh, what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to check that all the RAM is actually detected, and then I'm just going to run a memory test. I uh, recommend you do this. Uh, just make sure that uh, there isn't any underlying problems, and uh, if there are, the Windows Memory Diagnostic will uh, we'll usually tell you. Uh, the other option is running memtest86, but you'll probably need to create a bootable CD or USB, which I'll probably do in another video. Anyway, if you just right-click on your Start menu in Windows 10, uh, or if you right-click on my computer in Windows 7, you can go into System, and you can just see how much total memory you have, and just make sure it lines up with what you expect for your particular system. This one is coming up with everything, and uh, that's all good. And uh, just head over to the search in uh, Windows and just type in memory. And Windows Memory Diagnostic should pop up. And uh, just get it to restart now and check for problems. Your computer will restart itself and then go into a memory test. And uh, if there's any severe issues, it'll tell you pretty much right away. Anywho, that's it for this video. Let me know if you have any questions. Hopefully this saves your PC. Um, if you do continue to have trouble, remember you can go back, try just one stick at a time, maybe just one slot, try different slots, try different sticks. Hopefully you can get something to work. If not, it could be something else. Um, it might be a graphics card if you have one of those, which by the way, this guide kind of also applies to. If you have a graphics card, try cleaning it with the eraser and uh, contact cleaner, and that might work. But um, otherwise, when in doubt, take it to someone who knows what they're doing and they'll often give you a diagnosis.
Anyway, hopefully this helps. Until next time, thank you for watching.